Our expedition was the first to enter Area X for more than two years, and much of our predecessors' equipment had rusted, their tents and sheds little more than husks. Looking out over that untroubled landscape, I do not believe any of us could yet see the threat. Hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm a reader and writer and co-founder of ConquerBooks.com. I'm Nicole. I'm Rebecca's sister, also writer for ConquerBooks.com. And today we'll be talking about Annihilation, the book, and the movie. So the book centers around this woman called the biologist. We never find out what her name is. Um, and she's our main character, and she goes into this mysterious Area X that is doing some sort of change to the ecosystem and the animals in this certain area of the country. And the concern is that Area X is growing bigger over time, and it's going down to the molecular level and changing um, really what makes Earth Earth. We watched the movie and read the book, and we hope that you did too, and we'll be talking about a book-movie comparison today. I definitely uh, preferred the book myself. Throughout the book, Jeff Vandermeer um, really foreshadows a lot of the bad things that are going to happen. You get this sense of unease almost on page one, on, on page one, definitely. And he never comes out and exactly says what it is you should be afraid of, um, because like the movie, they really don't know what's going on. You know, they're going... But she's very much a loner, and I, I really appreciated the way that Jeff Vandermeer built her character. That as a child, she was really into um, ponds and ecosystems and just watching all the little bugs fly around, which led her um, to Area X. I mean, she went in there after her husband, who didn't come back, definitely. And the movie really played on, she's got to know what her husband did. Why did he go there? But the book was much more... You know, yeah, she cares about her husband, but she was always destined for this place. Mm -hmm. And um, the way he builds their marriage, they have marital problems, and in the movie we get this real quick flash of she had an affair with somebody with, you know, no backstory, no explanation. A very quick flash. Very quick. And um, in, the, in the book, it's this buildup of um, she's a quiet person. She doesn't connect with people easily, and that's mm -hmm. the number one problem. But she does connect with nature. And I like the book's build of her character as a scientist and as a person, you know, looking at her just as she is, not um, as necessarily a scandalous woman who had this affair as they did in the movie. And in fact, um, her team that goes into Area X, it's a team of all women. And I felt like I appreciated the fact that both the book and the movie, they treated them as scientists who were going in to discover this new area and all the changes that were happening there. Um, in the book, one of the things I remembered, um, starting off when they first crossed through the barrier, they arrived in Area X, um, the first monster was actually just a boar. But there was a sense that the boar had like some sort of innate knowledge that it was running towards their group along a trail, but this boar, there was something off about it. And, um... Jeff Vandermeer writes about how it was almost ridiculous that this boar was running down this very long path and like nobody knew what to do and it was kind of this almost hilarious moment because they're all fumbling around trying to figure out what to do with this this rampaging boar coming at them and then suddenly it just veers off the path and so you get this really exciting moment that then turns into a non-issue but all the characters they start off with like a sense of threat like something there is threatening them and I think it's really crafty how um, Vandermeer does it in the book that he really didn't have to use a lot, but you felt very uneasy after that. Um, the book also talks about this moaning creature because um, they're near these um, wetlands and there's something out there that they hear thrashing around every once in a while and something that's doing this like mysterious, uneasy moan at night. And um, in the book, they never see what it is but in the movie, we got a glimpse of the movie's interpretation of what that moaning character... I, I keep feel like I say moaning, but that's, <laughs> what, that's like the main core of what the character, the monster, does. I think he used the term moaning quite a bit in the book <laughs> as well. <laughs> so, um, the scene in the movie where um, we, we first see this creature is, um, it's just this this bear in the darkness that takes one of the members of the expedition and there you see this 
this bear coming through the door and all of the characters are tied up in chairs and this bear starts with their backs to the bear. Yes. <laughs> and everybody's freezing and trying not to react and the bear starts moaning and the moans are actually the screams of the victims that it had previously eaten. And it's looking for this reaction. And the most unsettling part... <laughs> oh my gosh, it was kind of terrible. Um, the most unsettling part was when the bear came up to one of the um, actors who was tied up yeah. and put like its teeth. Yeah. And oh everybody just like looked like, well, are we <laughs> reacting to this? Are we yeah. still trying to pretend it's not here? Um, but luckily things are Ugh. somewhat resolved in the movie. Um, but you have to watch that part for yourself. It's really good. It was That was terrifying. <laughs> Yeah, the most intense movie, parts of a movie I've seen in a while. Yeah. Um, and in the book, what struck me was this part, um, I want to say it was almost to the end, where the moaning that happens turns out to be this inexplicable creature who's living within the reeds. And our biologist um, is trying to get back to base camp after an experience of, at the lighthouse, which did not have an asteroid in it, by the way. And in the book <laughs> at all. Nobody said asteroid in the book. <laughs> um, so she's trying to get back to base camp and she feels feels more than sees this monster in the reeds and she outruns it. And he, he does a good job of scaring you even though you never actually see this beast. You know, it says that um, there were molten skins on the path, like human skins, like the thing was like it looked like a human, but it was shedding a bunch of its skins. Um, but it, when it comes out of the reeds behind her, it says it's very, very heavy. It feels like a full kind of experience. But of course, she bursts out of the reeds. He never actually explains what it looks like, and the biologist never actually sees it. And he does this a lot through the book, where he doesn't give things um, a concrete visual. And I think that this is a technique for writing weird fiction, um, is that through the whole thing he's drawing you through, and you really can't quite grasp what's going on, you get these weird feelings, and it definitely gives you this this creepy, goosebumpy feel, um, but he never actually comes out and gives it to you. Because in weird fiction, um, when you're using... When you're using the imagination, and you're talking about vague things, you definitely get a much more scary feeling because you don't know what it is. It's like hearing a sound in the house, and you're like, what is your imagination just goes wild. But when you find out that it's just your dog, you know, it's totally different. So in weird fiction, when you're dealing with these very vague things that you don't want to kind of, you don't want to come completely forward with, um, because, because that can very easily turn into fantasy. You know, if she had turned around and faced this creature and it was a giant slug with very specific pieces, it was a giant slug with centipede arms, then it's not really weird anymore. It's become a monster. And monsters are physical, they're in your world, there's something you can face. Whereas weird is very much up here and behind you where you can't see it. Um, mm -hmm. And he does that through the entire book and he does it very well and that's what has made him such a successful writer, I think. Well, if you haven't read the book or watched the movie already, we hope that you do. And um, if you have, post in the comments, what did you like about the book or the movie? Which one did you prefer? What questions are just eating away about you, at you, about the ending? There were definitely some questions. I've ta talked with multiple people who had no idea what exactly that ending was supposed to mean in either the book or the movie, and the endings are two completely different endings. And I think that was kind of the point. In the movie, it felt like it kind of morphed into like an art film and it had all of these interesting things that I just wanted you to experience. But you definitely will get lots of feelings while watching the movie, and you definitely will walk away from the book pretty uneasy. So be prepared. Um, Nicole's going to talk about our next book. We are doing this right here. This is called The Three-Body Problem by Cixi Lu, um, who is one of the best science fiction authors in China. Um, supposedly. I have not read a book of his yet. This book is uh, set in the backdrop of China's Cultural Revolution and it is about Earth sending a signal out to the aliens and the aliens respond. Mm -hmm. and it is supposed to be really fantastic. So we are going to read this and do another video on it in August. Please um, read along 